I am amazed, and I think I do not even realize as a pastor how that the words I speak um, or the words that God speaks through me to people's hearts uh, that at some point you're going to need them and you may even need them now this morning. I was reminded by one of our ladies who had called me and said, Pastor, I have a, a huge burden, huge situation going on. And she said, uh, you preached something about three months ago that at that moment is when I needed that word from the Lord. So I'm going to ask you to be very careful about the people around you that we don't disturb anybody. Luke chapter 8, if you will. Luke chapter 8. I'm going to pray and I'm going to get right into it. This morning, I'm preaching on this subject, what is your cause? What is your cause? cause and I want you to pay close attention this morning let me bolster your faith in the Lord and uh, let's pray Heavenly Father Lord there is no way that I can speak to a man's heart I can only speak to a man's ears I can only speak to uh, uh, someone's mind but I cannot I cannot get down into the heart that is something dear God that is reserved for the power of God and the spirit of God to do I pray that all of us would would rally around the truth this morning for the next 29 28 minutes and God I pray you'd help us now in Jesus name we pray amen what is your cause every person under the sound of my voice who has lived life and you've experienced life at all doesn't matter on what level that you have in your past or you're probably carrying with you right now a situation like the woman inside of Luke chapter 8 who carried a problem for 12 years carried a private problem for 12 years carried a problem that did not make her life easy it made her life miserable Jesus in Luke chapter 8 was just coming off a whirlwind tour if you will of amazing things happening there was a storm came up on the sea and the storm was huge and then all of a sudden the storm stopped and that was because Jesus stepped out on the ship and said peace be still and the storm just stopped then you're going to read later on in Luke chapter 8 how that he came upon the maniac of Kadera the Gadarenes the Bible tells us this maniac because of the devils that possessed him was naked was out of his mind and truly was scaring a lot of people Jesus steps up heals the demoniac man puts the devil in a bunch of swine there is no doubt that the rumors started picking up that did you hear about the storm that one man calmed down did you know that maniac over in the next town did you hear how that maniac now is clothed, sitting, and in his right mind? Now, I didn't hear that. Where'd that come from? That man of Galilee, that man named, named, named Jesus Christ, he, stopped, he can stop the weather. That man named Jesus Christ, they didn't have to pepper spray that maniac or, or tase that maniac. That man just stepped up, and whatever was going on in that man went from that man to a herd of swine and they went and drowned themselves I want you to notice now he comes to the city in chapter 8 verse 40 look at it and it came to pass that when Jesus was returned the people gladly received him look at this for they were all what waiting what were they waiting on they were waiting for the man they were waiting for this man from Galilee to show up because they have heard how he calmed the storm. They had heard how he had calmed a maniac, man among the tombs, and they wanted to see him. To get the picture now, Jesus is coming back. There's a throng of people. There is an entire town that's waiting for him at the city limits. All of a sudden, Jairus, a ruler of the Jews, an important man, steps up and says, Jesus, my daughter... Imagine now the city behind this man. My daughter is sick. Jesus, you have to come to my house. Besought him, begged him. And Jesus said, absolutely, absolutely, I'll go to your house. Get the picture now. Jairus turns. Jesus is following Jairus through the crowd. And you and I have seen people go through a crowd and it is kind of splits. Then we come to the story that we read about and that we're going to talk about 
we come to the story that through the crowd, a normal looking lady with a condition that she reached up and touched the hem of Jesus' garment. I love this story. I have referenced the story in preaching over the past several weeks because I think it's such an incredible story that shows the concern of our Savior. Jesus stops and Jesus says, who touched me? And the disciples said, Master, would you look around you? There are thousands of people around you. What do you mean, who touched me? And he said, oh, no, 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 no. There are some people who just came to see me Listen to me now, but there's a small group, yea, one person that needed to touch me. And you listen to me. In every church service, there's just those who came to see what is going down, on down at the church house. But they're sitting among us, people who carry private issues and private concerns in their heart. And guess what? You want to, you have to reach out and touch Jesus. That's why it doesn't bother me when people sleep and it doesn't bother me when people have better things to do in the auditorium because those people just come to see Jesus. I'm looking for those individuals sitting here today that you just didn't come to see the choir. You just didn't come to see who was going to sing the special. You just didn't come to see who else was going to be at church. You came in carrying a condition and carrying a problem, carrying a cause, and you said, I just don't want to see that man I've got to touch that man. Because the only hope in somebody's life this morning is not the throng of people, it's the Jesus walking among the people. And that's why you better be very careful how you pay attention in church. You just may be distracting somebody around you that's here because they have to touch Jesus. You keep reading on here. Once Jesus realized that somebody touched him, then the Bible says that the virtue, the virtue went out of him. You know what the word virtue literally means? It literally means the miraculous healing of Jesus. I may have virtue, and I'm freezing right now, Brother Kennard, if you don't mind. Brother Forge, can you kind of take care of this side? And, and, and I may be able to help you with a temporary emotional problem, but I can't fix you. Only one person has virtue enough to fix you, and guess who that is? That's Jesus Christ. And as you go through here, look at the wording in the Bible in verse number 47, look at it. For what cause she had touched him. When she knew that she could not be hid in verse 47, she came trembling and falling down before him, and here's what she said. Can I tell you why I touched you? Can I tell you why I touched the hem of your garment? And she declared to everybody, here's what was going on in my life that I felt like and needed not just to see you. I could have saw you five rows back. I just didn't want to see you. I had to touch you. And when she told what she was dealing with, And the only reason we know what she was dealing with is because God recorded what she was dealing with. Can I ask you a couple questions this morning? What cause or issue have you been dealing with for years? What is it that you carry with you? What is it that you'll get in your car and take home with you? What is it that after the laughter you have to deal with? What is it in your life that after everybody's gone and you're alone and by the way can I just say this the best time you want to fix your problems quicker get alone with Jesus and you'll fix them much quicker than getting in a group with people and analyzing what's going on with you there is something about silence that brings the Holy Ghost of God's power to the forefront everybody needs downtime and for you not to give your house downtime is for you to do an injustice to the people in your house Don't fix it with noise. Don't fix it with vacations. Don't fix it with earbuds. Don't fix it with loud music. Don't fix it with TV programs. Don't escape through the exit of entertainment. Get alone with Jesus. And it's very interesting that this lady, 12 years, 12 years she had carried this issue. 12 years 
She had dealt with this burden. I'm going to give you several observations, and I think I can help you. I want you to write down one word. The words believe. Believe. Throughout the Bible, you'll see the word believe. I'm going to ask you today to take your cause, your issue, and I want you to believe this about Jesus. There are four things that you have to believe about Jesus Christ. I mean, right now, you're going to have to say, I believe these four things about Jesus. Because nobody ever fixes their problems until they believe that that person has the solution. That that person knows what they're talking about. Let me give you four things from Scripture that I think you need to believe. Are you ready? Number one, believe Jesus will use his power in your issue. Believe that Jesus will use his power in your issue. You know, Jesus just came off power over the weather, power over a demoniac. And this woman said, I believe that if I can just touch Jesus, that he will take my situation and he will heal my situation. You you listen to your pastor real quick. Even pastors can lose their belief that the master will use his power in my issue. Sometimes I see him use it in everybody else's world. I'll see him pull back the curtains in everybody else's situation. But boy, I want him to use his power in my situation. If you were to tell the story I'm about to tell you, I would call you a liar. And I would not even tell this story if Jeff Lines was not here to confirm the story I'm about to tell you. Every once in a while, God pulls back the curtain of something only God can do that makes you go, oh my soul, what did we just get ourselves into? Friday night, I drove to Mississippi Thursday and preached a youth meeting Thursday night, Friday morning, and Friday night. I was preaching with Brother Tim Rule from California. And, uh, and, and he preached first, I preached second, Friday night. And uh, this has nothing to do with Tim Rule. This has nothing to do with Bob Gray. The second, this has everything to do with God. And I wouldn't believe it if I had not been there. Tim Rule preached on hell out of Luke 16. When he started preaching on hell, the place got incredibly still. It was so eerie and how still it was. There's 300 teenagers in this auditorium. It is so eerie on how still it was that I'm sitting there going, oh my, we're in for a ride. He preached on hell, didn't preach very long. And then Brother Westmoreland realized what was going on and stepped right to the pulpit and said, girls come sing, ladies come sing, and then we're getting right back into the service. And so I'm sitting there and the girls start singing. I start looking at my outline and I go, oh my, I don't even know what's going on right now. So I'm just going to get in on the ride and see what does happen. Sit up and started preaching and a cell phone went off on the back right. And I said, said, could could y'all shut that cell phone off back there? And a 65-year-old lady said, Brother Gray, she's talking to me. Brother Gray, it was off. And I said, ma'am, just, just, just turn off the cell phone. So I go back to preaching. It goes off again. And I stopped and said, ma'am, could you please turn the cell phone off? She's like, pastor, I'm telling you, Brother Gray, she's talking to me. Brother Gray, it was awesome. Just, just if, if you don't mind, just... I said, let's pray again. So I went back to prayer. I mean, I'm mean, already into my sermon. If the devil wasn't fighting then, I don't know what was fighting. So we get into the sermon I'm preaching about the fact that we don't know when the grace of God is going to appear. We don't know why God's grace appears when it does. I used the story of Peter and Andrew, and I brought up this man from the crowd, and I said, can anybody help me? Did anybody get saved at a a later in life? And several people raised their hand, and I just reached out and said, well, sir, would you come up here then? Guy comes up to the platform, and he stands right over here, and and I said, how old were you when the grace of God appeared to you that brings salvation? He said, I was 35. I was in concrete construction, and on that day, Christ saved me. I said, young people, young people, 
We don't know why God waited all that time to save that man and bring salvation to him. Then I said, is anybody here, now you saw, is anybody here that you were steeped in religion and you got saved and you had a falling off the horse experience and all of a sudden your eyes were open and this Spanish guy raised his hand and I said, come on up here. I said, Catholic, for 27 years he was Catholic and God appeared to him. I said, young people, I don't know why God waited 35 years in that man's life and 27 years in the Catholic man's life. I don't understand that. But that's God's deal. That's not our deal. Then I said, I'm going to ask a question. And I was equating it to Timothy coming from a broken home. And I said, young people, this is going to be, I need somebody's help. But it truly is going to have to be very delicate because I'm going to ask somebody to admit that you come from a dysfunctional home nobody raised their hand except one kid and i ignored him because i didn't want to use him so i said you know, put your hand down i said please please anybody here come from a dysfunctional home that you would let brother gray use you the kid shows his hand back up again well he's the only option i have why don't you come up so he comes up and stands to my left so I said, young people, I don't know why the grace of God appears 35 years down this man's life. Why didn't God save him? I asked him, I said, how much heartache did you go through in 35 years? And the man said, you have no idea. My life was a mess. My home was a mess. Everything's a mess on me. And he started, I said, see, why, why did God all of a sudden bring enlightenment to a Catholic? Why didn't God start way back there? Then I go to the young man, put my arm around the young man, and I said when did you get saved he said just now i was like you mean just now and he goes like just now i said like where he said sitting out there that's why i raised my hand because i just got saved Remember the man I brought up over here that got saved and lived a rough life? Guess who kid was involved in that dysfunctional home that he had been praying for for 10 years to get saved? Taryn, standing right there. When that kid said, just now, that man over here started going, oh, 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 oh. He was so excited. He had been, whoo, whoo, whoo. And I said, what's the matter? He said, that's my son. That's, that's my, my, I've been praying for 10 years. He goes running to dad. They're hugging on the ground over there. I'm trying to preach the word of God out here. And I'm like, okay, what do you do now? Only thing I knew to do, let's sing. There is a fountain filled with blood. And I'm telling you right now, them teenagers joined in and we sang while they hugged. And then I said, get back over here because I got to finish the sermon. Then it dawns on me about 10 minutes into the sermon, what just happened. Then I'm like, when did you get saved? Just now. And how long have you been praying? 10 years. How rough has your world been? Terrible. How bad of a father were you? Terrible. That was God. Now it's hard for me to explain to you, so I've asked for the video, and I'm going to show you that segment of the video. Because it was incredible. After the service, that 62-year-old 60, lady walked up to me, and she said, Pastor, I apologize, but my husband is my witness. And I said, ma'am, I wasn't trying to get on to you. She said, no, listen to me. I turned my phone off before I came into the service. It was off. And she said, then it started ringing. And when I looked at the screen, there was nobody calling It went off the second time. And then when I said, we got to pray. Devil don't like this. Let's pray. She said, then I looked back at my phone. She said, you know when your phone dies, how it gives you that little wheel that lets you know? After you prayed, the little wheel started going. And I showed it to my husband. You listen to me. The reason people don't believe it 
is because they've never seen the master step up and go peace be still they've never seen the master step up and take an out of control demoniac man and watch him clothed in his right mind you listen to me every story you've ever heard about the miraculous power of God I don't know what your issue is and I don't know what your cause is today but I'm here to tell you that the same God that calmed the storms and the same God that healed the demon demoniac boy and the same God that brought salvation at that moment in that service is the same God that wants to use his power in your situation but you've got to believe that he's not exhausted his power throughout the ages his power is just as strong right now in 2015 and and some of you truly think, well, that only happens to somebody else's world. And I'm here to tell you, it happens all the time. And he wants to make it happen in your world. Believe that your cause, he wants you to touch him. Your cause, he wants you to grab a hold of him. Believe it. Because once you believe that he wants to heal your cause. Well, I'm just a ball and chain and I'm trapped till I die. Uh-uh, uh-uh. He wants to heal your cause. Say, pa Pastor, do you really believe in that spiritual warfare and that the devil's real? Oh, yeah, he's real. He's real. But greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. Second thing you have to believe. What is your cause? Second thing you have to believe is that Jesus does not respect personalities. Don't, don't start thinking in your mind, well, he respects that guy, but Jesus doesn't respect me. Look at verse number 40. And it came to pass that when Jesus re returned, the people gladly received him, for they were all waiting for him. And behold, verse 41, there came a man named Jairus, and he was a ruler of the synagogue, and he fell down at Jesus' feet and besought him that he would come into his house, for he had only one daughter, about 12 years of age, and she, is lay, she, and she lay a dying but as he went, the people thronged him. Listen to me. The big boy of the town showed up and said, Jesus, I need you. But you know the beautiful thing about Jesus is he didn't go with the man because he was a ruler. Listen to me. He went with the man because the man had an issue. He had a daughter. God doesn't love somebody next to you better than he does you. And God doesn't play this caste system that other countries play that, oh, you're a ruler, your problems come first. You know what the beautiful thing is? Listen to this. God is so multitasking that he can put on hold this situation to take care of your situation. And then even if this situation goes bad, resurrected power is what Jesus is. I want you to listen to me. Reach out and touch Jesus with what's going on in your life don't sit here and struggle with it for year after year after year get to that point where you say i believe jesus can take care of me i believe he'll use his power on my situation and then get out there and reach out and touch jesus and what you're going to find out is he'll respond to you like he responds to everybody else well if i was that spiritual i could no oh, no 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 you're his children you're his child Third thing I want to tell you is this. Are you ready? Believe that man does not have the solution. You're going to have to believe that the men around you do not have the solution. Look what it says here in verse number 43. And a woman having an issue of blood uh, 12 years, look at it, when she had spent all of her living upon what? Physicians. Luke 8, 43. Upon what? Physicians. Neither could any could, could, could be healed of any. Listen to me. You're going to have to believe that there's no walking human being that can fix this one. You know, a lot of people with causes and issues get upset when people don't call them back to help me with my issue. And what they fail to realize is, is that where man's line may be busy or man's battery on their cell phone may run dead, Jesus' battery never runs dead. And Jesus is always available for you and I. You listen to me. You got to believe. And what I thought was very interesting here is I wish one of the physicians would have been a disciple. If one of her physicians had been a disciple, then she wouldn't have spent all she had and she would have got healed much quicker. Listen to me. When people come to you looking for spiritual answers, don't play God. Point them to God. 
The best thing you'll ever do is take the Bible and put it in their hand and say, my friend, get alone with God and go read the word. Let me pray with you. It's very interesting that, that her cause, she got it fixed. But you have to believe that Jesus has the miracle power he wants to use. You have to believe that Jesus is not a respecter. You have to believe that man cannot fix your problems. And last thing's this, are you ready? Believe Jesus will give you more than healing. Believe Jesus will give you more than healing. Listen to me. Do you know what makes the hospital sometimes very scary? Is because the hospital can only do one part of what people need. Case in point. You don't go to the hospital and then all of a sudden on your way out they give you a briefcase full of money. You don't go to the hospital and then take away the pain and then on your way out give you keys to a new car. I promise you nobody here has had their doctor come back and say, you know, I've been keeping total for the last 20 years of you giving me money and I would just like to give you back everything you've invested in my ministry. Doesn't work that way. But not Jesus, the physician, because look what she got more than just an absence of pain. Look at verse number 48. And he said unto her, daughter, be of good, what? Comfort. Thy faith hath made thee whole. Go in what? Peace. You know what Jesus said? I'm not only going to take care of your issue, but come here, come here. Listen to me. It was really funny to me that, that the Savior said, who touched me? Well, he's the son of God. Doesn't he know everything? Then why did he have to say, who touched me? Not because he didn't know, but because she wa he wanted her to know I want to give you more than just taking care of your problems. I want to give you something to take with you on the journey. Oh, you listen to me. There's a lot of people who can be healed of something by man's standards, but they don't get that comfort and peace. But when the Lord does it, it's more than just the absence of the pain. He gives you something to take with you as you're walking through this world when that dad came out of that meeting and i said dad stand there with his son i said dad i don't even really realize what just happened and he looked at me and said brother gray i came in with a problem i'm leaving with a son who's saved listen to me do you know why you're miserable after you've seen the psychiatrist? Because he can only take away the guilt. But he can't give you anything to cover up the guilt. He can only temporarily make you feel better. But there's something about the Savior that he takes out and then he fills you full of comfort. 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 Where else have we heard that word? Comfort. Comforter? Did he, didn't he tell us that when I go away, I will send you a comforter? Walking on the inside of Bob Gray's soul is a comforter. So when I have a problem and I have an issue, I'm going to the Lord because I know he has the power to fix it. And I know he doesn't respect anybody else more than he does my problem. And I know that he has the ability to put everybody's problem on hold, take care of mine, and then fixes everybody else's problem. And guess what? Not only does he fix my problem, but he gives me joy. He gives me a smile. He gives me peace. He gives me comfort. I can walk around in a utopia of a lot of good. What's your issue? How long have you been carrying it? Reach out to the Savior. Heavenly Father, we love you.